DIY isn't for everyone, nor is it for every space. But with a few design tips and the right products, you can create a spectacular result. Welcome to your outdoor home by Brickworks. Now the key to any DIY project is to get your preparation and your foundations right. You do these two things and you're halfway there. I'm going to show you the simplest form of paving which is laying it on a road base and sand screed bed. Now that we've cleared this space it feels so much more open and spacious. The next stage is the paving. That'll be starting in the corner over there and working our way out. Road base or crusher dust is made up of large particles and small particles which enables it all to get compacted and combined together to form a hard structure. We started with compacting the road base, so we got the Wacken compactor, made a really hard formed foundation for everything that we're going to put on top of that. Once the road base foundations are solid, it's time to bring in the sand. When you're ordering your sand, make sure it's paving sand or washed river sand. You don't want any other sand. Washed river sand is a nice coarse sand that will enable you to do this job really easily. You'll need to get a rough level with that sand and then compact it solidly again. Then you achieve your levels with a straight edge, lay down your screed rail, making sure that there's fall in the paving so the water can escape. Then screed all the sand back so you have a nice level sand bed. Then you can start laying your pavers. The pavers I've selected for this project are a small format paver from Bowral Bricks and a large format paver from Urban Stone Residential. Both of them are in a light colour because we're on the south side of the house so the space felt like it needed a little bit of brightening up. The large format pavers mean that there's less lines so it's less busy. The small format is great for achieving those rolling sections of the ramp. I just thought that was a better solution for this tighter space. When it's time to lay your pavers, you want to make sure that the first line is dead straight and then every few lines after that, check it with your string line. We're using form work to get our first row in. You can use a string line or a straight edge and you'll be able to see if it's straight or not. At some point in the job, you're going to need to cut in your pavers, whether it's up against a brick wall or a house or a drain. If you want a really neat cut, use a brick saw like we are or you can use a hammer and bolster or a grinder, but it depends on the depth and the width of your pavers. Wherever your paving doesn't meet the house or a brick wall or something to lock it into, you're going to have to lock it in manually. So what you do is remove the sand down to the road base and then do a haunch along that paved edge. That's a sand and cement mix, just spread along the edge of the paver and pushed in and smoothed off with a trowel. That locks that edge in so it never moves. Once you've locked in your edges, it's time to sweep in the sand to interlock the rest of the body of paving. And you can do it in layers. If it doesn't all go in in the first stage, come again the next day, sweep it in again until you've got a really solid grid lock of paving. So there you have it. That covers off on everything you need to take on your own DIY paving project on road base from start to finish. Now keep in mind, get your road base foundations right, keep your lines straight and then lock in the bed so nothing moves.